welcome to Cardigan Mountain School's 2023 commencement ceremony. As we gather today to celebrate these amazing young men, let us remember and give thanks for the myriad days that we mark now in this, the metaphorical sunset of our time together. You, their families, and we, their Cardigan adults, have loved them through some of the toughest times in their youthful lives. And although the sunset is approaching, we can take comfort in recognizing that the golden light of a setting sun continues to glow long after the burnished ball drops below the horizon. We can be confident that their influence will remain in us as ours will in theirs. Please join me now by uniting in one spirit a profound gratitude for the passage which was theirs. Gracious God, we thank you for these young men. We remember their toil, resilience, character, and strength. We thank you for their creativity they brought to their studies, their bravery in battle, and their generosity of soul. We thank you for their families who sacrificed so much that their sons could become cougars. Be with us now as we salute their many successes. Amen. Good morning and welcome one and all to Cardigan Mountain School's 77th commencement exercises. And I apologize in advance, battling a bit of a springtime cold, so forgive my, my voice. For a school that was created at the end of World War II, only on the basis of a great idea, Cardigan has come a long way. After 77 years, many things are different. Yet much has remained unchanged. Most notably, Cardigan's commitment to and understanding of the development of boys at this extraordinary time in their lives. During their time here on the point, they sometimes confound us. They make us laugh. At times, they may disappoint us. And lots of times, they make us swell with pride and excitement for who they are and who we see them becoming. The parents and educators here assembled know that Cardigan is a project, one that began years ago and continues to evolve each year. Our task is to guide a collection of growing boys from around the country and around the world to become young men of substance who aspire to live by a set of decent values as their brains, <clears throat> bodies, and souls make the connections and begin to form their adult lives. The faculty, faculty at Cardigan are constantly robbed of the satisfaction of admiring their work. If they're here long enough, they may encounter a man returning to the point for an alumni event with a familiar gleam in his eye, a hand extended and a smile of gratitude for the teacher who did so much for him so many years ago. There is perhaps no more Herculean task that a person might undertake than to devote oneself to the cause of helping another grow up. It's noble work, it's sacred. Let it not be thankless. That's a mention to you boys. Cardigan Mountain School is dedicated to a multi-dimensional and complementary education of young men, where the strengthening of one aspect of their development invites and allows for the strengthening of another. The concept that strength begets strength doesn't stop today or probably ever, I believe <clears throat> that the journey of learning and growing stops when we take our last breath. Parents, your sons, however they arrived on the point, we affectionately call many of the new students unmade beds. <laughs> you parents might, might have employed a slightly less charitable descriptor when you dropped them off. But however they arrived, they have become what you see and sense before you, young men of real character, and rich potential. At Cardigan, we use our core values of compassion, integrity, respect, and courage as the root of everything we do. These boys have not mastered any of it, no more than any adult here has. But, and this is one of the secrets of this magical place, they know that actively and intentionally aspiring to live one's life by a set of shared values by others is a worthy pursuit. Cardigan boys call each other brothers. 
because they know that their individual strengths and success can only come from being part of a team and that they need the other fellow. For many of us, it takes a lifetime to realize all that. For these boys, <clears throat> looking so dapper before us, they know it in their bones right now. And that, my friends, is something we should all be proud of. The brotherhood they share is perhaps the most valuable takeaway from the Cardigan experience. Love is an antidote for the far too frequent reminders of the division and fear existent in our communities at home and abroad. And these guys have gobs of it right now. You've given it to them, your parents, siblings, uncles and aunts, grandparents. We've given it to them. They've given it to one another. Our world desperately needs these boys, young men who have a compass whose heading is true. Gentlemen of the class of 2023, you've lived and worked in the presence of giants. Assembled to my right and left, Cardigan's faculty. They're special, and though you leave here today, they will be with you for the rest of your lives. The lesson they have taught you, and the, the lessons rather they have taught you, have no expiration date. Once you set foot on Cardigan's campus, you are given a lifetime membership. It will never leave you, and you'll find moments that have made up your time here will serve as constant nutrition for your growth in life. Soon you'll have one more chance to thank the faculty in the receiving line. Don't regret telling someone how much they mean to you. It's an emotional day, and if there's a lump in your throat, kind of like mine, it's because something profound has happened, and something has. Hold back nothing, lads. Hold back nothing, because this moment will never, ever happen again. Of course, also be sure you take a moment at some point to thank your parents and families for giving you the gift of this extraordinary experience that is Cardigan Mountain School. As someone who has sat in those seats twice as a parent, I can tell you that there isn't, room, isn't a room large enough to contain the love that's sitting in the seats behind you boys. Your families are here to salute you and your growth, and they are having a moment too. A moment when they see this boy who, just yesterday it seemed, they were dropping off at this place so far away, now a young man grown, sturdy, aware, curious, and coiled like a spring. It's the reason why we worked so hard to get you here, to give you this precious gift, why they wouldn't have missed this day for anything. Finally, I want to take a moment to give a special welcome to a few important members of the Cardigan family. Former heads of school, Chip and Janet Dewar, and Dave and Steph McCus Mus McCusker are with us today, as is Mrs. Bev Wakeley, accompanied by her son and current board member, John Wakeley. Bev and her husband, the late Norm Wakeley, ran Cardigan for over 20 years. I know that folks have traveled to the point from near and far, from just down the road to all corners of the globe. And many of you are right now watching the live stream from your homes. Whether you're sitting here in person or watching remotely, you are here with us today. Parents, grandparents, and siblings of our graduates, alumni, trustees, and so many more friends of Cardigan, I say welcome. We are honored by your presence today, one and all, on this beautiful day in New Hampshire. I now have the distinct privilege to introduce the chair of Cardigan's Board of Trustees, Mr. David Gregory. David Gregory and his wife, Beth Wilkinson, are the parents of three fantastic kids, each unique and wonderful in their own way. Their oldest son, Max, is a member of Cardigan's class of 2018. Parents in the audi audience today surely recognize David from his successful career in television journalism, which has included serving as chief, chief White House correspondent for NBC News during the president of George W. Bush, and shortly thereafter as moderator of Meet the Press, and more recently as a political analyst at CNN. Perhaps most important to all of us is that David loves Cardigan. In any head of school's life and work, the relationship between the head and the board chair must be based in understanding, 
respect, and trust. Part of David's love for Cardigan is manifested in being a good listener and thought partner with me. Although sometimes I get a little nervous when during our weekly calls he says, Chris, I want to hear about this or that. And before I can begin, he says, and then I have a follow-up question as well. <laughs> I sometimes wish his follow-up could be drowned out by the rotors of Marine One. <laughs> Alas, I'm not as lucky as some of his presidential targets. I admire David through, um, through his work. Uh, I've been privileged to witness the incredible combination of mind and heart working for good. Don't be surprised if this man sheds a tear. He cares more about what's in his heart than what he looks like. And believe me, he cares about what he looks like. <laughs> it is with great respect, <laughs> it is with great respect, confidence that he cares about me too after making that comment. <laughs> and a tremendous amount of gratitude that I introduced my boss, my friend, my mentor, Mr. David Gregory. Thank you, Chris. Thank you. I can't wait for the review this summer. Um, and I'm so sorry that unfortunately you sound like Bruce Springsteen today, and that that's actually not, and not intentional. I actually do remember the McCuskers, and I know how to say their name, but you know how that goes. Um, you know how that is, Dave. It's just a passage of time, consolidation of power. It's like, who was the head of school before? Don't know. Um, welcome. Good morning. What a great day. I mean, it's very seldom 103 degrees here in New Hampshire. So when you have it and you can all be together under a tent, we don't think this will go longer than three or four hours. So I think everybody will be really comfortable. But yeah, guys, congratulations. What a great day. Congratulations to all our graduates and to your parents who I see in the audience, to, to in some cases your very young grandparents, other family members and friends who are here. Congratulations to all of you um, and, and welcome to what is a fabulous day in New Hampshire and on the point. I want to, uh, I want to join Chris in welcoming some of my colleagues uh, on the board. John has mentioned John Wakeley is here. Jessica Abramson Lott is here, is also a proud mama of a graduate. Uh, so glad that uh, she's here. George Davis is here um, from the board as well. Uh, and uh, Dohan Ko is here as well. So welcome to, um, to my colleagues. I love, I love graduation. It's so great. You know, guys, I mean, it, it, it gets, it's emotional for, the, for us, even if we're, you know, like me, if I'm not your parent or not related to you at all, because... We're just, we're so excited about everything that comes next, but it's also the end of something for us. It represents the, the, the end of this part of your youth. And uh, that's just something that we struggle to let go of. Um, I have been known to cry, uh, you know, traumatically even uh, at these <laughs> events, but I'm not gonna do that today because my twins are about to graduate from high school in the next two weeks, and, I, and I'm the commencement speaker at my son's graduation, and he said, Dad, you cannot cry. <laughs> Nobody thinks that I'm gonna accomplish this, but I'm gonna try, every opportunity I get, I'm gonna try to, you know, get up to the line of how sad I am as a parent and see if I can avoid crying. So I'm just kind of working on some material today. Um, <laughs> So great accomplishment for all you guys, uh, really significant in your young lives and now you're thinking about what's next and it's high school and it's all this stuff and in just a, a short while you're going to get your phones back, which is pretty cool too, right? <laughs> it's assuming you uh, actually observe the policy and then, and then a short while after that you're actually going to admit first to yourselves and maybe to another person that the rule of not allowing your phones was actually one of the greatest things that ever happened to you. Um, but that'll come a little bit later. It's true. It's true. I, I remember taking my son with his eighth grade friends. They're like, well, this is how I do the phone policy. And I'd give it like, you know, 17 minutes on Saturday afternoon and then 43 minutes on Sunday. And then like by a year later, they're all like, oh my God, that was the best thing that we didn't have our phones. Um, I think you guys know that you are why we're here. You are the engine of this place. You are uh, everything that makes Cardigan so important. It's the work you do in the classroom. It's the work you do on the fields. 
in the Gates building, and even in the dorms where you're building relationships with each other uh, as brothers. Um, all examples of what powers this place. But you can't do it on your own. I think you know that. And as Mr. Day alluded to, the wonderful adults in this community, the adults who know you and who love you. Um, I want to add my thanks to our wonderful faculty, to our teachers who care so much, to our administrators who are here, um, to the staff, which includes our maintenance crews, housekeeping, uh, the fields, to all our coaches. I say a profound thank you to the adults who nurture you and who are more than uh, strong partners in all that you have accomplished. Um, so I say thank you to them. And as you'll hear more than a few times, do yourself a favor of saying thank you to them as well. And be specific when you say thank you. You know, the great writer Maya Angelou talked about, you know, you may not remember what was said or what was done, but you'll remember how this place made you feel. You'll remember how faculty members, teachers made you feel. Try to communicate that. Say it, it means a lot. These folks do this because they love education, they love young people, and they, and they love to do what they do. So be specific in your appreciation. I know they will appreciate it. So, men, you are leaving Cardigan today, but Cardigan is not gonna leave you. I can tell you from my own son, who's uh, almost 21 now, that this place stays with you. It's a place where the memories build, that sense of what you accomplished, of the brotherhood, of, of being really cared about and known and respected and, and nurtured for exactly who you are, uh, that that builds over time. It's, it's one of these places where the experience really does live up to the hype. You're gonna cherish and remember your time here. To you and to your families, to all the smiling faces that I see out there, please stay connected with us even after your time is done. You know, it's, it's not easy being a junior boarding school, right? A, a, a middle school, because everybody kind of moves on to the next stage. But the leaders of this school are so committed to driving the Cardigan project forward. What we do here is vital. It's so important. Now more than ever, a focus on uh, all-boy education, a focus on developing how young boys uh, develop and learn. Uh, a focus on how all of that is changing. We are driving this project forward and we want to be the most accessible place that we can be for all of those families whose sons need us and who we need in return. So support us, stay connected to us, find out what we're doing. Man, I'm gonna borrow uh, some advice that I saw hanging up on a poster in the Wallach building. There's lots of stuff over there. And there's really lots of great free advice that you can find. Um, I'm always looking for material. So I was walking through there, and there's a, there's a poster that says, a few things that require no talent. I like, to, I like to focus on those things, too. A few things that require no talent. Effort, energy, and attitude. So there's a lot in your life that you can't control, but you can control those things. So give your best effort, always share great energy, and retain your very best attitude. I'm gonna say something Mr. Day just said a minute ago. Take the time to say thank you to your parents today. I don't just mean after a nice lunch or dinner. Um, they, they have given you an amazing opportunity to be a cardigan, to have this experience, to have this education. Um, we as parents would do anything for you. But by the way, not always easy in, in the giving of a great opportunity when you're this age to send you to boarding school. <laughs> so, um, but we do it because it's the right place. So um, thank you uh, and thank them. You have seized uh, on a great opportunity here and I'm so happy for all of you. Congratulations. I knew I would regret making a joke about David. <laughs> I now have the uh, honor of presenting the commencement awards. While today is a day to celebrate all of our graduates, Cardigan does have a tradition of recognizing certain individuals through eight formal student awards. The Caldwell Prize, 
It is awarded to the senior who has shown outstanding athletic achievement and sportsmanship. The 2023 Caldwell Prize is awarded to Nathan Watson. The Dewar Prize is awarded annually in honor of Dr. and Mrs. Cameron K. Dewar to the member of the senior class with the highest academic standing. The 2023 Dewar Prize is awarded to Sung Hoon Park. The Hinman Prize is given annually in memory of Mr. and Mrs. Harold P. Hinman to the senior who, in the opinion of the faculty, by industrious application of his studies, through his attitude on the playing field and by his behavior and integrity, most nearly approaches the ideals of manhood as conceived in the minds of the founders of Cardigan Mountain School. The 2023 Hinman Prize is again, uh, I'm sorry, is awarded to Nathan Watson. <laughs> the Founders Prize is awarded to the senior who has the will to complete any project regardless of the difficulties encountered without thought of personal gain, and whose objective is a job well done, in the same approach that characterized the life of Harold P. Hinman, one of the founders of Cardigan Mountain School. And the 2023 Founders Prize is awarded to Sung Hoon Park. The Norman and Beverly Wakeley Prize is awarded by the class of 1989 to the senior who, in the opinion of his classmates, best upholds the tradition, spirit, and pride of Cardigan Mountain School, thus making every day a beautiful day in New Hampshire. The 2023 Norman and Beverly Wakeley Prize is awarded to Donald Eddie Andrews. Incidentally, I'm reminded by seeing Eddie that Doc Gardner just reminded me today that this year we've broken the number of, uh, the record for broken bones at Cardigan Mountain School <laughs> with 20, including I think one last night, <laughs> or maybe two nights ago. That's why we have a health center. The Panache Memorial Award is awarded annually by the class of 1959 as a memorial to Carl J. Panacci, to that member of the senior class who, in the eyes of his fellow students, has achieved the best attained ideals of honesty, integrity, leadership, and general social and spiritual adjustment. The 2023 Panacci Memorial Award goes to Jaden Samuel Fisick. This Skibiski Memorial Award is given as a memorial to Michael R. Skibiski, to that member of the senior class who has shown the greatest progress during his Cardigan Mountain School years. There are two recipients of the 2023 Skibiski Memorial Award. They are Ashel, Asher Coldiron Frankel and Hojun Patrick Kim. Gentlemen, please come forward. The William Knapp, uh, excuse me, the William Knapp Morrison Award is presented to the senior who, 
In the opinion of the students, best exemplifies the spirit of Willie Morrison, class of 82, in, uh, in academics, athletics, and as a campus citizen. The 2023 William Knapp Morrison Award goes to Darius DeMorris Yarborough. Wow. In addition to our formal awards, this year we have four, four students who will be receiving the faculty prize, awarded to seniors who, in the opinion of the faculty, have made special contributions to Cardigan Mountain School. Boys, as I call your name, uh, please come up. Sifia Jia. Jun Sung Jake Lim. <laughs> Toshihiro Moriyama. and Artemio Costa Zaragoza. At this time, it's my pleasure to introduce our final award of the day for diplomas the Gilbert Family Service Award. In honor of the extraordinary volunteer efforts of, the Car of Cardigan parents Maureen and Andy Gilbert, the Gilbert Family, Gilbert Family Service Award is given annually to recognize member, a member or members of the Cardigan Mountain School community whose service to the school has been exceptional. Maureen herself is here today. Why don't you stand up and give a wave, Maureen, please? There she is. Recipients of your award fully understand the importance of community and are recognized by their extended Cardigan family as models of leadership through exemplary service. This year's awards are presented to two exceptional Cardigan families. The first should come as no surprise to anyone here today. This family has two boys at Cardigan and from the frequency of their visits, you would think that they were day parents, not sleepless New Yorker road warriors. They've taken so many of your boys for a weekend or an off-campus meal, and a few of you were likely introduced to or strongly encouraged to attend Cardigan by them. They have participated in every parent meeting, supported and championed every fundraising initiative, and on several occasions hosted dinners for various Cardigan community constituents, from current and past parents, trustees, alumni, to their most recent shindy this past April, welcoming incoming families from the tri-state area. For all of these reasons, the first recipients of this award have clearly distinguished themselves in their service to the Cardigan community. Mike and Liz Santini, your generous spirit and love for our school is inspirational to me and to all of us at Cardigan. It should be no surprise that acorns like Alexis and Julian would emanate from such, such sturdy timber. At this time, it's my distinct pleasure to express our school's gratitude to you in the form of this year's Gilbert Family Service Award. Please come forward. The second Gilbert Family Service Award is presented to a family that has been a leader in our international community. 
In many ways, we ask more of our international families in helping us to bridge the gap uh, to the diverse cultures and geographic distance between them and our rural New England home. This family, and at least one of their two exceptional sons, has been with me for my entire seven-year career at Cardigan, and today marks their final day as current Cardigan parents. They served as parent leaders in our Chinese community, helping us develop the tight and loving network that has served us and them so well. As a board member, Selena acted as the parent, the leader of parent leaders, overseeing our emergency rollout of a remote learning program for our Chinese students during the pandemic. And then, slowly but surely, guiding them back, guiding them back to the point. Selena Huang, with the support of her husband, Mr. Chen, and their sons, Kenny and Stefan, have raised our game and our expectations. They've set a gold standard when it comes to parent leadership, and we hope that they continue to guide us as respected figures in our Chinese parent community in the future. Ms. Huang and Mr. Chen, please come up and accept this year's second Gilbert Family Service Award. And now it is my pleasure to introduce this year's all school leader, Nate Watson. Dear Cardigan community, what a year it has been. I never thought that middle school boys could go through so much together in the small amount of time we've had. This year has been so busy with all of the tests we've had, all of the games we played, all of the secondary school tours and interviews we've been to, not forgetting taking care of each other every single day, no matter how challenging our days were. That's what I remember most about Cardigan, the unique brotherhood. I never saw or even heard of a place like Cardigan before. When I arrived here, I had no idea what I was getting myself into. <laughs> My first few days on the point were like a dream. I was gathered with people from all around the world on an astonishing campus. Other than my family, I never have, I, ne I have never been a part of a community that cares about each other like Cardigan does. And I'm proud to call this place home. Coming to Cardigan was by far the best decision my family have made for both my brother and I. Since day one, Cardigan has, has always been a safe, fun, challenging, and welcoming place. I remember last year when I, one of my classmates, Juan Pablo, was thrilled to introduce himself to my dad and I half in Spanish and half in English. I was glad to know I wasn't the only person who came to Cardigan to learn English. This place has taught us so much throughout our time here, and I hope you all feel the same way as I do about this community, because I can guarantee you, you will never be a part of a close-knit community like this one. I want to give credit to Mr. Langaty, Mrs. Leroy, Mrs. Day, and all of the teachers that wrote us recommendations for their hard work and all they have done for us concerning the secondary process. The secondary school team gave us the best chance to continue our education, the next step for chapter. They are the reason why we were able to get into all of the amazing schools we've got into, even if the competition was extremely elevated this year. I wish you all the best of luck wherever you have enrolled next fall. Before wishing goodbye, I have a couple of pieces of advice to give you for next year at your new school. First, try new things. A lot of us have experienced something, that, something new that we've discovered at Cardigan. Some of the schools you are going to offer programs that you, will, that you might never be able to do again. Secondly, make connections. Cardigan taught us that really well. Helping the other fellow is the best way to create relationships within the community. I hope you will build strong friendships that will, have, that will last a lifetime because those will definitely help you, so, help you out someday. You never know what will happen in the future. Third, never give up. You will be facing multiple challenging moments throughout high school. The best way you can face those challenges is by staying focused, working hard, and using the resources you are given. Lastly, enjoy yourself. High school is supposed to be one of the highlights of your life. Enjoy every little chunk of it, do what you love, and most importantly, follow your, follow your heart. 
This year was the first normal year without any COVID-19 restrictions. We are fortunate to be able to get a sense of what Corrigan truly is. While I was looking at this year's yearbook, I noticed that a lot of people have enjoyed our Corrigan traditions, such as the Lake Run, Sandwich Fair, Senior Ski Holiday, Eagle Brook Day, Mountain Day, the Finland Hockey Trip, Polar Bear, Student versus Faculty Games, and many more. I believe those traditions are what makes Cardigan different from any other school. Every single person on the point takes those rich traditions to heart, which makes it really special. However, this will not be possible without the help of our amazing staff and faculty. <coughs> they have been here for us every step of the way and will continue to do so. Unfortunately, we'll be losing a handful of faculty next year. And I wanted to say thank you to all of you who will be leaving your mark on the point. Mr. Kruisberg, Mr. Escalante, Mrs. Escalante, Mr. Edson, Mrs. Edson, Ms. Kidder, Mr. Walsh, Mr. Leroy, Mrs. Leroy, Ms. Lloyd, Mr. Forrest, Mr. Hempel, Ms. Dobbin, Mr. Riffey, Mr. White, and Mr. Germain. A positive impact on all of us will forever be remembered. You will all be missed and you will always be a part of this community. Thank you so much, Cargan, for the opportunity to develop into young adults who are going to make a positive impact wherever we end up. Thank you. Thank you, Nate, both for your thoughtful reflections this morning and for your quiet, consistent, and mature leadership all year. It is now uh, my distinct honor and pleasure to introduce this year's commencement speaker, Ms. Yulia Gerbut. There is much to be learned from those who have lived a complete life and have earned a commanding view from the high ground. The young can often lose hope because they can't see beyond their screens or beyond the day. Yet I increasingly believe that all that comes, all that sacred comes from youth. And yet there is wisdom that the old sometimes can't give away. We all sometimes feel a sense of disenfranchisement and fracture in our increasingly noisy lives, full of things but too often empty of the important stuff. Sometimes there are lessons to be learned from those who themselves are experiencing fracture and displacement. <coughs> Excuse me. I've learned from Yulia that victimhood is a state of mind. Refusing to lose hope is a choice. Refusing to fight for your home, your family, is to surrender to strong forces which need ordinary people just to do nothing. What Yulia and so many Ukrainians have shown us is that thrown into extraordinary situations, normal people can tap into reservoirs of courage and resourcefulness that were latent until called upon. The takeaway needs to be that we are all extraordinary people. Some of us just haven't tapped into that reserve yet. <coughs> Our speaker today is a parent of two Cardigan boys, Max, an eighth grader, and Nikita, a seventh grader. Yulia and her sons found Cardigan through a fire brigade of well-intentioned people who use their own resourcefulness to do some good work in a world that needs it. We at Cardigan were fortunate to be able to host four boys from Ukraine. Each has their own story. Each has memories of their journey from home to here that they will never forget. Each has contributed much to our community and will take his equal share when he leaves, just as all of you boys will. Although their path to Cardigan, like all of yours, involved hard work, choices, and opportunity, each of these Ukrainian boys, at his core, is a middle school boy who just wants to learn, play sports, music, act in the theater, and make friends. Their parents want what all parents want, a safe place to learn and grow and to have the best opportunity to succeed that their talents will allow. While Max and Nikita are here at Cardigan, Yulia has been living in New York City and is enrolled as a, in a master's program at Columbia University. I've had occasion to visit her a couple of times when I've been in the city. One time, while we were having coffee together near Columbia, I remarked that escaping Kiev 
with her kids and leaving her parents behind in Mariupol to fend for themselves must have been the hardest thing in her life. Without hesitating, Yulia said, no, that wasn't that hard. I did what I had to do for my kids. Anyone would do the same. She then told me the hardest part, and that's not my story to tell. Yulia. Good morning. Congratulations to all the students for accomplishing so much this year. Me and my family are from Ukraine, an incredibly beautiful independent country that has been torn apart by Russian aggression. Today, I would like to talk about why education is so important and why your graduation will have a lasting impact on your lives. Education can bring you very far, but the most important thing education does is preparing you for the unknown. It prepares you to respond changes that you did not see coming. Life is full of ups and downs. And how you respond to change is what matters the most. At some point of my life, the plans I make, want ha you make, <coughs> won't happen, no matter how hard you want them to. You can use confidence that has been sharpened by your education to respond intelligently to the circumstances that are out of your control. I'm proof of this. I have been through many challenges during my life. None of them were the least bit predictable. When I was like you, graduating middle school, I could never ever imagine my life would turn out like this. And yet, I have experienced an enormous amount of happiness despite this. And this is what an education can and will prepare for you. An education is a stability beneath your feet to be able to face the world fearlessly. Without the security under you, you will be fearful. It's that simple. Education leads to fearlessness. When I was your age, I was perfectionist. I wanted things to happen my way. I mapped out my life. I planned for many years ahead. I would attend high school in the United States before returning to Ukraine. Then I would go to the best university in Eastern Europe, then go to business school. Then I would be elected the first woman president of Ukraine, and then retire in sunny Italy. <laughs> When I was your age, that was my dream. As a young person, I desperately dreamt of a better life for myself. I pushed myself to go at everything, or I felt myself a failure. One of the challenges of being a perfectionist is that you are constantly unsatisfied with yourself, and this is unhealthy. Pushing yourself is good, but being unsatisfied when things don't go your way is not. That voice inside you that beats you up when things don't happen the way you want is unhealthy. Why? Well, because you can prepare, you can train, you can practice, you can even role play for something, but sometimes stuff happens completely out of control and you can do nothing about it. You can only react. It's like the weather. We all want it to be sunny, but if it rains, we can't do anything about it. We can just smile and open the umbrella, right? We can't change the weather. The education helps us to understand the things we can control and the things we can't, and the difference between the two. I realized this later in my life. You see, completely unexpectedly, I received a gift, very special gift that changed my life and my outlook, and it's the lesson I wish to pass on to you today. In 2014, I gave birth to my third son, Martin, a bright and loving boy, who together with Max and Nikita made my life. But then something happened in 2016 that I never ever expected in a million years. 
beautiful Martin was diagnosed by cancer, with cancer. It was like a thunderbolt for me. The gift that I received was how young Martin responded to it. While all of us were crazy in fear and sadness, he was not. He was strong, unrelenting, and curious and positive despite all their craziness. Martin passed away three years before the war, but he provided me with a lesson that I hold dearly to this day. His reaction to unpredictable circumstances was an inspiration for all of us. I received a second lesson three years after his death. It was my birthday. I was out to, at a famous pizza restaurant in Kiev, the capital of Ukraine. After dinner with Max and Nikita, who celebrated with me, we went home to bed. The boys had to go to school early next day, so we put my birthday cake to the fridge and agreed we would eat cake the very next morning before the school. We never got the chance to do that. I was awoken at 5.10 a.m. by a strange sound. I, I was laying in my bed in my house in a beautiful tree-lined suburb of the capital, much like the towns you all live in, and then I heard a kind of rumble. I remember waking and thinking to myself that it doesn't sound like thunder, it really doesn't sound like anything I ever heard in my life. Later I realized that what I, I was hearing was the sound of bombs dropping on the people's homes around me. Never in a million years could I have ever thought this could happen, that Russia would dare to invade my home and attack families, children, and communities like you all live in. A few minutes later, I saw an explosion from my bedroom window through my blooming orchids on the windowsill. This is when judgment, prepared by my long education, kicked in and I quickly made decisions that were life and death decisions. I ran to my son's bedrooms, woke them up, took them downstairs to hide in our tiny sauna, the only room in the house without windows. We stayed there all day as Russians' helicopters and warplanes drop bombs around us in, in absolutely uncertainty what to do. Then, 12 hours later, absolutely exhausted, I put my sons in the car, put our lives into one suitcase, and started our long trip out of Kiev. It was minus 20 degrees, incredibly cold and dark. I drove for days to the border. We joined thousands of other women and children who were escaping Ukraine. During the next several days, after February 24th, millions of people were forced to flee their homes, searching for the safety and setting the largest refugee crisis in Europe since World War II. During the next six weeks, a quarter of the population of Ukraine, 11 million people, had to leave their homes and move to neighboring countries. And we, I will tell you, it was extremely difficult to leave our home without knowing if we will ever come back. It was scary and very unclear where to go, how to save my children's lives and escape the war zone. After the long trip through Europe, we made our way to the US where, once again, I'm building a new life to myself and my family. I'm graduating from Columbia University with a master's degree, and I'm searching for a career in a beautiful new country, a country that already has provided us with so many new relationships and friends, and for this, we are eternally thankful. It took me a long time to recognize my life was not going to be perfect. Now I understand that there is no perfect time to do anything. There is no such things as perfect like circumstances. There is no place for being perfect. I realize the perfect time is now. 
I realized that my education prepared me to make judgment calls and respond to circumstances in the way that provided stability and safety and opportunity. And this is a golden lesson. I realized that my life isn't over just because it looked different than I had originally planned. I realized that crisis does lead to opportunity and change can lead to something better. As I'm here and I'm in my life where I am today, I just had to trust the time of my life. Two days ago, I came back from Kiev, my hometown. During my visit, I had a chance to reunite with my parents who had fled eastern part of Ukraine due to the Russian occupation. The destruction of streets and families is devastating. Bombing of the hospitals, maternity wards, schools, theaters, the bombing of children, all seems unimaginable. Despite this, Ukrainians are remain resilient and we continue to strive the life our, to live our lives as normally as possible, despite broken homes, broken lives, risks, and danger every day. We do not lose, lose our faith and hope and will. I often remind my sons that with support, anything is possible. History is our guide. Today, Ukraine is the front line in changing world. And what is happening in our country is directly related to the future of this country too. So please continue to stand with Ukraine. We are in this together. I won't lie to you. Life is tough. Life is extremely tough, but it's beautiful too. Life has its twists and turns, ebbs and flows, but joy, agency, compassion, will shape you as will challenges and many bumps in the road. I encourage you all to be open to change. You will not do everything perfectly, I promise. I know it. You will make mistakes. You will not make everything you plan for. There will be a change in well-made plans. Don't beat yourself up if they do not come true. Understand it's a work in progress. Trust the timing of your life. I encourage you all to be ready for change, for challenges, for adventures. And when something doesn't go the way you want it, reflect on it for a day or so, and then just say to yourself, okay, next, and be open to change. So congratulations, graduates. Be grateful, not only for your successes, but also for your losses. I'm so grateful for things in life that didn't work out for me. Because of it, I have the honor to experience this moment here with you today. Thank you so much. Thank you, Yulia, for sharing your time with us here this morning and your incredible story. Now, for the moment we've all been waiting for, the presentation of diplomas. And here we begin. Elon Abramson. Freeman Lee Ambrose. <laughs> Jun Young On.
Donald Edward Andrews. Casey Hayden Blatt. <laughs> Daniel Thomas Blank. Makai Marshall Brown. Jorge Barrio Rojas. Liam Michael Burke. <laughs> Enrique Castillo. Griffin Riley Sepio. <laughs> Kai Yang Chen. Inwa Chen. Archer William Davenport. Sa Yuen Fang. <laughs> Jaden Samuel Fisick. Asher Cold Iron Frankel. <laughs> Sebastian Gary Zambrano.
Zheng Gong. Emilio Gutierrez Couple. <laughs> Youngmin Han. Tucker McLean Harris. <laughs> Drew Henry Hemingway. Brandon William Downey Hennessy. <laughs> Xing Yuan Hu. Min Jun Huang. <laughs> Rupert Peter Ingram. Safe Ja. <laughs> Bohan Zhang. Grayson Morse Jones. He's gonna do something. George S. Kavanaugh. Ho Jung Patrick Kim. <laughs> Jay Song Nathan Kim. Joshua 
Yulhuan Kim. Sung Yoon Kim. <laughs> Kai Andrew Kinoshita. Hyunjun Jason Ko. <laughs> Emmanuel August Levine. Chak Shing Lee. Jermin Lee. Jun Seong, Jake Lim. <laughs> Maddox, Tuttle Linen. Yu Ha Han Liu. John K. McNair. Clement Moore McKeith. Aiden Malone. Jun Suk Adrian Moon.
Toshihiro Moriyama. Bodie Edward Morano. <laughs> Dylan Ness. Isaac Parrish Oberting. <laughs> Samen O. Harrison Hill Uten. <laughs> Kunhu Park. Sung Hoon Park. <laughs> Sung San Park. Jordan Gung Pham. <laughs> Permpoon Prompon. Oberon Robbins. <laughs> Enrique Rojas. Maximus Principio Romano. <laughs> William Dunn Ruffa. Alexis Rutherford Santini.
Hudson Schmidt. Nicholas Charles Sumner. <laughs> Juwan Ryan Sung. Natacorn Tangler Some Fun. <laughs> Michael Dennis Wilman Tanzi. Joshua Jaden Tedeschi. <laughs> Shuha Tai. Alex Ejer Wong. <laughs> Nathan Watson. Fountain, Varney Whitaker. <laughs> Darius Demoris Yarborough. Aaron Jayon Yu. Hey. In June, Andrew Yu. Artemio Costa Zaragoza. What she said, ladies and gentlemen. 
I present to you the class of 2023. Let's give them a round of applause. Join me now in a final blessing before you go. Cardigan Class of 2023, may God bless you and your families with his abundant favor. May wisdom's gentle whisper guide you as you choose duty and devotion over ease and indifference. May your hearts be joyful as you carry the radiant gleam of this precious place with you wherever you go. Amen.